I've gotten to connect with so many amazing hairdressers and people in the beauty industry um, throughout my years of working with Pulp Riot. And y'all just get to now add to this journey and I get to add to your journey. And I, again, I wanna thank you so, so much for allowing me to be here and to share some of my love and knowledge of Pulp Riot with everybody. So on Erin today, we're gonna do a little color block in her bang. We're gonna do some hot pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my triangular section out of her bang. When you're doing color blocking, something that I find important is like, where does your guest wanna see the color block, right? Do they want it to be bold in their face, like how mine is in the front? Do they want it to be more hidden? Or do they want it to like really stand out? So for Erin today, we're gonna do just a little kind of pie shape right here in the front. I do wanna go off of where her hair is parted. I'm so sorry if there's a little hairspray and I snag. And I wanna include this kind of longer piece that's in her face frame a little bit. So when her hair lays flat, she has that little nice little poke of hot pink. Does that sound good? So I'm gonna be utilizing um, color meshes today to help keep my sections nice and clean. I like using meshes preferably over foils. Um, they do have a good amount of flexibility with them. So um, against the face, they'll curve to the shape of the head. So I don't have to worry about the foil slipping or folding and crinkling and falling to the ground. Um, and then when I'm ready and I'm done with the section, I can just kind of flip them up and clip it and it'll be nice and easy off her face. Um, sometimes, depending on the length of the hair, I can do like a little, a little roll with it. And that's really nice to keep it off the face as well. So I like to outline my section first. I'm gonna hold the hair between my fingers and give it a little bit of tension. And I'm going to grab my color on the brush and I'm just going to outline this section. This is gonna be enough color that this mesh has something to stick to. See, like magic. And this is something really important. So I'm gonna show y'all how to properly apply your semi-permanents. So you wanna go front, back, side to side. And what that's gonna do is it's going to roll those hair strands side to side. And it's going to ensure that every single hair is getting coated exactly the same and it's gonna be even from roots to ends. And notice that my sections of hair are pretty thin, right? You wanna make sure that the sections that you're working on are about a fourth of an inch or thinner. And that's to, again, ensure even saturation. So that is going to be our little hot pink triangle color block in the front. And then I'm gonna take a second mesh and I'm just going to lay this directly on top. I wanna make sure I'm getting this as well. So it's okay if the ends don't get fully covered. I wanna make sure I'm getting up there so it protects that hot pink from getting other places. And I'm gonna do the little roll like we talked about. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom here and just give her a little twist, a little roll, and get her nice and tight out of Aaron's face here. So then moving on to the rest of Aaron's hair here, we're gonna do that bubble technique. So I am going to section her into essentially four quadrants, except for that one piece in the bang. So I'm going to section her front away from her back, just from the top of the head to right behind the ear. So we do have a little bit of shorter hair back here. So our sections are gonna be a little bit bigger than what we just talked about, but I'm about to kind of blow your mind with this, okay? So the bubble technique, what makes it so unique, it's a pretty quick technique once you get the hang of it, but what makes it so unique is that all the colors lay directly on top of each other. Oh, scary, Sabrina, what are we talking about? <laughs> so we'll start with pink in our first section. I'm gonna start at the nape. I wanna make sure I'm scooping all of these little hairs that might've get, gotten caught in the towel here. And I wanna make sure that my section, thank you, Lauren. Right, we don't have a whole lot of blonde hair here, but that's okay. I'm gonna clip this up and I wanna get all these little hairs out of the way, right? So if you have to use more clips, that's fine. Just make sure your sections are pretty clean, like that. So we have blush in our first bowl. Ooh. Ooh. And then we have lilac that matches my gloves very nicely in the second bowl. Ah. Ah. So I'm gonna put a little bit of color here on my mesh. And then when I pick up Erin's hair here, now I might've put this a little too low on here. No, we got it. So it's gonna hold that hair in place. And then when I pick up more color, I'm just going to paint directly on top of this, okay? Now I'm gonna do a little bit of that front back side to side that we talked about before. But in this case, with a bubble technique like this, it's actually okay to have a little bit of like hollow spots in there. So if you think about the bubble and how it looks, there's some like sheerness through there that doesn't have color. So that's gonna aid in the holographic and the iridescent look that we're going for with this bubble technique. Does that make sense? So then taking my next section, Let's clip that up a little bit better. 
perfect. So now this hair is going to sit directly on top of that pink. Scary, I promise it's not. Now I'm going to take my second brush with my lilac and I'm going to paint directly on top of this, okay? So now this technique I will say does work best if you're following like a traditional rainbow pattern or if you're using complementary colors. If I were doing this with blue and yellow, what would happen? Green, yeah. But since I'm working with shades that are in a similar color family, they're gonna work really well together. So just keep that in mind when you're picking your color palette for your guests, that you're keeping in mind their level of hair and what the color palette is that you're going for. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue working up her head, rotating back and forth between pink and purple. Sounds super simple, right? It is super simple. This is gonna be a technique that you can do pretty quickly behind the chair, like once all the lightning is done, and it's giving a really high impact. So people are gonna think that, wow, you spent so much time doing that, that's so amazing, right? It took you hours, and you're just like, little did you know. I can do a full head bubble technique, like a full rainbow, I can do it in about 30 minutes. So we're just coming up on the top here, we're finishing up. Lauren's got one little section left. I got a couple little sections left on this side, and then, I did go ahead and section the rest of Aaron's bangs away, and we're gonna do the bang section as its own section, right? So we'll do that in front of her face forward. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and flip Aaron around real quick, and we'll do these front pieces. She's not gonna be completely in the front because I need to still be able to reach. And just clip that out of my way. I don't like that one there. We'll do that. Perfect. And again, taking my meshes, what did we say we were gonna start with? Purple. Purple. How could I forget my favorite? So keeping it towards the top of my mesh because we're working with bangs and it's not a very large section. Again, I'm gonna move this out. And then we have this front section left here that's going to be its own little section. So again, starting with a pretty thin section in the front here, clipping this back out of the way. And sticking it down, yay. <laughs> banging, the bangs are banging. So with this type of technique, I'm not looking for saturation. I'm just making sure there's no little stray babies. So I can see a couple right here. I'm just gonna pick whichever color. Um, if I was doing this in a traditional rainbow, I typically would go with the lighter shades, like pinks, purples. I would never really grab a blue and just kind of blop it on. But I just wanna make sure I'm getting all those little baby hairs so that there's no strays when we go to washer. So traditionally, our colors wanna process for how long? Y'all are so smart, you're learning so much. Um, in this instance, we don't have technically a full like 45 minutes, but with the pastel colors and with the look that we're going for, it's okay that it's not processing the full time because we are going for that more kind of iridescent pastel look, right? Playing it cool. So we're gonna let her process for probably like another like 10 minutes and then we'll have Lauren um, give her a good rinse. And how are we gonna have Lauren rinse her? Cold water, what else? No shampoo and what else? High pressure. Okay, roll. Look at this. How do you feel? Love it. You feel beautiful? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay, so, and if you split the hair, you can see no matter which way I part it, you're going to get kind of a different look with it. How's that look? Do we love it? Yeah. Awesome. I live. <laughs> Go ahead and give us a spin real quick. Woo! And a round of applause for our beautiful model. Thank you. Thank you.